This isn't a science fiction dream or some distant future fix. It's real, and it's happening now. A small device, no bigger than a suitcase, could soon be the reason people survive in places where rain no longer falls and taps have long since run dry. Created by scientists at MIT and Shanghai, this invention pulls fresh water from the sea using nothing but sunlight. It doesn't need fuel, wires, or expensive parts. And it doesn't poison the ocean. For remote islands fighting rising tides, and for cities watching rivers shrink, this could be the beginning of something extraordinary. Islands on the Edge Far out in the Pacific Ocean, scattered like emeralds across the sea, lies a country few have heard of, but many may one day look to for answers. Kiribati Made up of 33 coral atolls and reef islands, it's a place both breathtaking and fragile. The islands are low, barely rising above sea level, and every year the water creeps closer. Homes vanish, crops wither, and the fresh water once stored in the earth begins to disappear. Traditionally, the people of Kiribati have relied on rain. It seeps through the porous coral and limestone, forming freshwater lenses beneath the ground. But these natural reservoirs are vanishing. Rising tides flood them with salt. Long droughts leave nothing to refill them. On South Tarawa, the capital, people live more densely than in Tokyo, yet there's often no water to drink. Plastic tanks on rooftops collect what little rain they can. But when the clouds stop coming, there's silence. Wells run dry. Taps don't drip. For families here, fresh water isn't just a resource, it's survival. And with climate change accelerating, survival is getting harder every day. That's why this new solar-powered breakthrough may change everything. Why desalination isn't the easy answer. With the ocean everywhere, desalination seems like an obvious fix. Just remove the salt and there's endless water. But the reality is far more complicated. Most desalination systems, like reverse osmosis, use intense pressure to push seawater through special membranes. These block the salt and allow clean water through, but they're expensive, energy-hungry, and high-maintenance. That's a big problem for places like Kiribati. During a recent drought, two desalination plants were built on Banaba Island. Both failed. The costs of fuel, repair, and upkeep were simply too much. And Banaba has its own scars. Decades of phosphate mining devastated its land and destroyed underground water reserves. Even when it works, desalination leaves behind a salty, toxic waste called brine. It's often dumped back into the sea, where it sinks and smothers marine life, creating lifeless zones. So while the sea offers a solution, the method matters. For vulnerable islands and coastal communities, desalination must be simpler, cleaner, and designed for survival, not just for rich nations. Lessons from the Deep when faced with the limits of traditional desalination, the research team looked somewhere unexpected. Not to machinery, but to the ocean itself. Deep below the surface, Earth's waters move in a slow, powerful rhythm called thermohaline circulation. Driven by differences in temperature and salinity, this invisible force carries heat and nutrients across the globe. It's nature's own conveyor belt. Inspired by this, scientists from MIT and Shanghai began to experiment. Could this natural flow be mimicked on a smaller scale to desalinate water? They tried basic setups, chambers heated by sunlight, membranes that allowed only vapor to pass through. These early models worked, but not well enough. Salt clogged the systems. Efficiency lagged. Still, each trial brought them closer. If they could create microcurrents, tiny versions of the ocean's deep movements, they might keep salt from settling at all. That idea changed everything. By tapping into nature's own design, they began crafting a device not just to clean water, but to do it without the problems that plague other systems. The solar box that changes everything. It looks simple, a box lowered into seawater, no wires, no engines, just sunlight. But inside this device, something extraordinary is happening. At the top layer, sunlight heats a thin film of seawater trapped in an insulated chamber. As the water warms, it begins to evaporate, forming pure vapor. 
That vapor passes through a special membrane, one that allows gas but blocks all liquid. On the other side, the vapor cools and condenses, turning into drinkable water. The salt stays behind. But instead of accumulating and clogging the system, the device uses gravity and heat to keep everything moving. It's slightly tilted, and that angle helps. As saltier water becomes denser, it sinks naturally. Miniature currents, like those found in the ocean depths, begin to swirl. These subtle flows keep pushing salt away from the membrane. The result is a self-cleaning, solar-powered machine. No pumps, no filters, no wasted energy. Just a quiet, steady stream of clean water. And for places like Kiribati, that quiet promise could mean the difference between hope and loss. Efficiency without compromise. What makes this device more than just a clever idea is how well it performs. In testing, it delivered fresh water at a rate unmatched by previous solar desalination systems. Scaled to the size of a carry-on suitcase, it can produce up to 6 liters per hour, all powered by the sun alone. No electricity, no batteries, just light and design. Even more impressive is its environmental footprint, or lack of one. Traditional desalination leaves behind toxic brine, but this system avoids that entirely. As salt builds up, it's naturally moved and flushed out before it becomes concentrated enough to do harm. No dead zones, no heat discharge. Just clean water and a clean conscience. It also runs without interruption for over 180 hours, days of operation, with no decline in performance, no maintenance, no salt clogging. And because it uses solar heat directly, it's more energy efficient than systems that first convert sunlight into electricity. It's simple, smart, and scalable. For vulnerable communities, this might be the first truly sustainable way to drink from the sea. A lifeline beyond islands. Kiribati may be the face of this crisis, but it's not alone. From California's sun-scorched valleys to parts of sub-Saharan Africa, water scarcity is turning from a seasonal struggle into a permanent reality. Even in wealthy nations, heat waves and droughts are pushing systems to the brink. And when the taps run dry, technology becomes more than convenience. It becomes survival. That's what makes this device remarkable. It's not tied to a power grid or massive infrastructure. It can be deployed anywhere the sun shines and the sea reaches. Emergency zones, refugee camps, remote villages, all could benefit. It's also scalable. A single unit could serve a household. Clustered units could support a community. And none of it would strain local ecosystems or rely on imported fuel. While politicians argue and mega-projects stall, this box, quiet and sun-powered, might offer a quicker answer. In a time when half the world experiences water stress each year, it offers something rare. A tool that works now for everyone. The membrane that made it possible. At the center of this breakthrough lies an innovation no bigger than a sheet of paper, a hydrophobic membrane. Unlike those used in traditional systems, this one doesn't allow any liquid to pass. Only vapor makes it through. That detail changes everything. When seawater is heated in the top chamber, it turns to vapor. The vapor crosses the membrane, leaving salt and impurities behind. It then condenses in the cooler lower section as clean, drinkable water. But what's most important is what doesn't happen. Salt doesn't stick. It doesn't build up. It doesn't shut the system down. In older systems, salt accumulation would halt everything. Maintenance was constant. Filters had to be cleaned or replaced. But here, thanks to the natural flow created by density differences and the tilted design, salt is swept away before it can cause harm. That's the real genius. A system that defends itself quietly and automatically. It's not just effective, it's dependable. And for remote places where repairs are hard, that could mean everything, from breakthrough to blueprint. This invention isn't just a scientific success, it's a vision of what's possible. A passive, sun-powered desalination system that requires no fuel, no electricity, and barely any maintenance. For the people of Kiribati, 
This could be the difference between desperation and dignity. For the rest of the world, it's a blueprint for the future of water. The projected cost? Just a fifth of a cent per liter, cheaper than U.S. tap water, and far more affordable than bottled or trucked-in supplies. And because the device is modular, it can grow with the needs of a community. From a single home to an entire village, it scales up easily. Even better, it's built with nature in mind. It doesn't disrupt the ocean. It doesn't need complicated parts. It just works quietly with the sun and sea as its partners. In an era defined by scarcity and extremes, this little box offers something rare. Resilience. A way to live not in fear of the water, but in harmony with it. In a world facing rising seas, shrinking rainfalls, and deepening thirst, the answer may have been hiding in plain sight, within the ocean itself. With nothing but sunlight and science, this breakthrough from MIT and Shanghai has redefined what's possible in water technology. No wires, no waste, just clean water flowing from salt and sun. For island nations, parched cities, and anyone caught between heat and scarcity, this isn't just hope, it's a solution. If this technology scales, it won't just quench thirst, it will rewrite how we survive. And perhaps how we finally learn to live with water, not against it.